Hello everyone, thank you for joining us today, your Sunday. We're happy to have Dr. Sina with us and we go in an interactive session together and if you're uh, okay, you can turn on your camera and also at the end, if you have any question, you can unmute yourself and ask a doctor your question. But for just to start, we ask the doctor to help yourself a little bit for us and the other students. Thank you. Uh, uh, thank you. Uh, I already said hello. So I have one question before starting. I want to see that if everybody is here as I'm seeing the names, everybody here is a Persian. Dr. Ali Saleh, Dr. Shatnam, a Zoom user, Dr. Naz, are you all Persian or not? And also Dr. Sorur. Dr. Naz, are you Persian? And also a Zoom user. I'm asking the name of the Zoom user, but I don't know if she's not responding to me. The reason I'm asking is that maybe it's if everybody is Persian, maybe it's it would be more useful for you guys to have the session in Farsi. What do you think, Mariam? Um, I don't know. Maybe in the middle of that, I we will have some other nationalities. I'm not sure to be honest. But if uh, the other people is okay. Okay, so I will, I will start with this, with, with English, and then in the questions, I would, I would uh, yeah, I would change it to Farsi if someone has the uh, question. So uh, about myself, uh, I graduated 2014 uh, from Iran, and I worked for almost four and a half year, and uh, late 2018, I came to Canada, uh, as PR, so I applied for express entry with my degree, with dental degree, and uh, so if anyone wants to know about the details of that, I would also explain it. Then I start to, uh, so when I got here and after, you know, being settled, uh, I tried to figure out what are the options that I have here in Canada to continue my career. and. Uh, after search, after all those researches that I've done, I came to the idea that I have three main pathways for myself. First pathway is to directly apply for residency programs, for specialty programs in which I am so interested in periodontics. Uh, I've done so many intraoral surgeries. Uh, you know, in Iran. So uh, this was my, you know, my uh, field of interest in dentistry. So I was considering that after the research, it came to my mind that uh, unfortunately, my chance for getting to uh, the program here in Canada would be almost zero because my competitors were Canadian uh, graduates. And of course, they have the priority. There is no law for it. So if you go online, you can see that there is no law for it. But guys, in Canada, unfortunately, there are some hidden laws, okay? There are some laws which are hidden. And this is one of the hidden laws that unfortunately, I'm not saying it didn't happen. It happened maybe for two, three, four people among thousands, thousands, thousands of internationally trained dentists which means that the, the uh, risk of getting into the, the possibility of getting to the specialty program uh, directly is almost zero. So I didn't want to waste my life. So I forgot about that. Uh, I considered the other two ways, which were direct licensing and uh, going to the university pathway. So when I, when I started to search about the advantages of this and disadvantages of both way, uh, I came to the decision that I need to go to university pathway, okay? So the first thing that you need to know is to know 
uh, what do you want to do? Okay, what is your target? So first choose your target. This is the smart way of processing, okay? So first choose your target. I choose that I want to go to university pathway at the same time, because also that pathway is a very hard and competitive pathway. I decided to, uh, con to continue with the direct licensing as well because they were overlapping uh, on the both ways uh, regarding the AFK. So for both ways, I had to take the AFK, okay? But what was the difference? If I wanted to go to direct licensing, it doesn't matter what is your score in AFK as long as you pass it, okay? But if you want to go to university pathway, it is important for you to get the highest possible mark. So at that time, everybody told me, if your target is University of Toronto, which now I had the pleasure to be in that uh, prestigious university, uh, you need to get above 90. And because of that, I had to study a lot. Getting above 90 in, you know, in AFK is not a very easy uh, you know, easy process. Uh, in my opinion, if you ask me, AFK is the hardest exam in the world in dentistry, okay? Uh, it's not because, you know, dentistry is hard because NDB is not giving you the fully standard questions. They are designing the questions with the purpose of misleading you to wrong answer. And this is what makes this exam the hardest dentistry exam in the world, in my opinion, at least. Uh, because I also took uh, part one, part two, I took uh, you know, other, other American exams and none of them were as difficult as AFK, okay? So anyways, so I decided to study hard to get above 90. Okay, and then I started to ask people who had uh, achieved the, you know, this score and who could get into university. And so I came to the idea that I need to take course. Okay, I need to take course. What is the reason that I need to, I needed to take course? Because yes, we had good education in Iran. I do agree. Uh, however, some of the concepts in Canada are different. And also after five years, I was almost forgetting about all the theories, okay? And for people who are taking the AFK course now or studying for the AFK, like Dr. Shapnam, I can see uh, she's here. They know that how detailed is this exam regarding the basic sciences, regarding the every fundamental knowledge. And it, uh, you know, the name it shows that, you know, assessment of fundamental knowledge. So it's all dentistry, you know, the whole dentistry is compressed in exam, okay? So that's why it's so comprehensive. So I needed to go to the courses because I didn't want to waste the time to search for the resources, search for the textbooks, articles. And uh, so I decided to join Confidentist based on the recommendations that I got from other people. And I would say I really, I really appreciate uh, what Dr. Mehdi had done for me because for me, myself, you know, I, I don't know about other people. This is my personal opinion that I learned a lot in Confidentist AFK exam, which helped me to pass the ACJ exam, second exam of equivalency process in just two weeks. So I just studied two weeks for the ACJ exam and I passed it with a score of 80 and at that time in my exam the highest score was 82 and I know so many people who have studied for four or five months for ACJ exam judgment exam and they can't clear it and even if they clear it they will clear it with 75 so what was the reason the reason was the knowledge not because I'm super smart no because I got so many knowledge in AFK exam okay which helped me to clear ACJ easy, very easy, okay? So technically I just studied X-ray for the judgment. So anyways, I started, I planned to take the exam in August uh, 2018, uh, sorry, August 2019, okay? And I wanted to take the part one and part two for United States, 
after August, after AFK in August. Unfortunately, in May, after I was kind of kind of ready for the uh, AFK exam, unfortunately, uh, I couldn't get the approval from the NDBE and my document were not approved yet, so I missed the deadline. So I couldn't register for the August, okay? So just see, I was studying almost 12, 13 hours a day to get ready for the August and my document didn't get approved. So I had to change my plan. So what did I do? I had to go first to the part one of the um, you know, United States board exam. But part one is completely different than AFK. Part one is completely basic science. Okay, so all of those microbiologies, biochemistry in detail, detailed question, which was a little bit hard for me after working for almost five years and being out of the school for six, seven years. So, but I had to do it, okay? And I had only three weeks for the part one because I couldn't reschedule my exam. And for people who are taking the INDB, they know that when you register, you have only six months to take your exam, okay? So I, I couldn't register because my six months was passed. My, I couldn't, sorry, uh, reschedule because my six months was passed. So I had to take it in June, end of June. And okay, so I studied almost 15 hours a day for part one in three weeks and I passed the exam. I don't know what was my score because they don't uh, announce their scores for part one, part two, and also I know for INDB. But I assume that I got a good score because then when I applied for American Dental School, I also got admission from those are school in the first cycle. So I, I assume that, you know, the scores very good. Uh, uh, Maria, yeah, we have one question that why uh, you're, uh, you couldn't get the approval at the first. Uh, because the process, the process of uh, getting approved by the NDB is taking forever, unfortunately. They are so slow so slow, same as other things in Canada. One of the problems that I have in Canada is that I'm a super fast person and everything, every process in Canada is a slow, okay? So this is part of that, just because of that, nothing else. I didn't have any problem in my documents, okay? So just the processing time was so slow. Uh, so that was the reason. Anyways, I start, after the part one, I started to study for AFK again in September. And again, I joined the course in Confidentis for the second time in September. I started to uh, study for AFK. At the same time, I started to work on X-ray for the part two of the uh, United States board exam. So I took AFK in February 2nd, if I'm not mistaken, February 2nd of 2020. And then two, two uh, weeks after that, in almost late February, I took the uh, part two for the United States. And I passed AFK with a, a score of 91. And uh, also I passed the part two. After getting 91, I was so happy that I can go through the university pathway. Okay, so this was kind of my journey in summary but it's you are just listening it it's a very hard journey you know you should you should uh, spend if you want to get high mark okay if no just you want to pass it's not that hard but if you want to get a high mark you need to spend at least 10 to 12 hours a day for this this is my recommendation yeah uh, so basically it's true i remember dr sina for afk exams and ACJ classes, and we're happy to have him as an instructor at Confidentist. So basically you answered the, another question I had that how you start for your AFK process. Thank you for that. But uh, the other things I wanna ask you is that, uh, what's your tips for people who wanna just start now and they just came to Canada and they just, you know, first we came to another country where it's just so confused about which way we have to start I know it's so confusing because even it was confusing for me when I got into Canada, I didn't know what's going on, actually. Uh, however, after the researches that I've done, 
I got to know and I told you, uh, in my opinion, guys, if you want to be successful, this is my recommendation, okay? Because I had the experience. First of all, just try to have a good target, okay? Target your goal, okay? Just look at what do you want to achieve, okay? You want to achieve direct license, you want to achieve university degree, uh, what, what is your goal, okay? And to know what is your goal, you should know that where do you see yourself in five years, in seven years, in 10 years in Canada, okay? So if you know where do you see yourself in Canada after five to 10 years, then you can have a good targeting, okay? And know what to do. So this is my first recommendation. Know what you want to do and then plan accordingly. Okay, because that would be completely a different plan. So do you recommend to go for the, their, uh, their degree for the university and turn the university or go just for the skills exam? I cannot say because it's different for other people. You know, it, it might be different for me. It might be different for Dr. Shabnam. It might be different for you. It might be different for anyone else, okay, based on their life. Okay, I'm not saying that the both of them has their own advantages and disadvantages. Of course, for me, university pathway was all advantages. Okay, although it's, it's a little bit more time consuming and also it's more expensive. I prefer to go to this pathway because I know that because based on the goals that I have in mind to achieve in Canada, University degree is super helpful for me to reaching to those, uh, you know, uh, goals. Uh, direct licensing is technically just about the, you know, the, it, it's just a paper. Okay, so you go you after and it's not fair to be honest, because after this long, hard process, you just get the paper that you can work in, uh, you know, inside the Canada. So I preferred to get a degree if I want to go through this process and just finish it once in my life. Because after getting the Canadian degree, which now I'm getting from University of Toronto, uh, I'm considered a Canadian dentist. So I can work all around the world without going to any equivalency process anymore, okay? But if you go to direct licensing process and you decide to after five, six years to move to United States after getting your passport, unfortunately, you have to go through the same process again. And you know, I would kill myself if I go through the same process for the third time in my life. Yeah, it's true. So uh, we have one question over here from Ali, if you're still the same level. Uh, what about ADAT exam? I study both of them as parallel. Uh, that would be a very a smart decision, actually, guys. So if you want to apply for universities, unfortunately, now, because University of Toronto and McGill University and most of the uh, dental schools in states in America, they accept ADAT, they need ADAT. So if I was you, as I planned part one and part one AFK together, so that was my plan to take them together, now, if I wanted to start, I would, I would take AFK, ADAT, and INDB, these three together, okay? Because there are almost 80 to 85% overlap between these exams, and only 10, 15% of, you know, separate uh, subjects, that's not hard to study, you know? So you can, you can study for all of them in parallel, yeah. Perfect, so we have another question. Uh that Nas asked, uh, her GPA is uh, as low as three evaluated by US organization course by course, but if I work hard and get a good AFA score, do I, attend, uh, do I stand a chance uh, in your team? Uh, Dr. Nas, for, uh, yeah, I can see that. Dr. Nas, uh, unfortunately for UFD, because I, I wanna be honest with you, okay? Everybody who knows me, uh, including Mariam Khanum, they know that, that I'm, I'm an honest person, okay? I don't want to make you happy now, okay? It's just to say that, yes, of course, you're going to get it, go for it. No, because it's waste of money, okay? So I would tell you the honest 
advice, okay? Then you can have the real picture. So for UFD, I would say, I'm not saying that it's zero, your chance is zero, but your chance is very, 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 very less, okay? So for UFD, if your GPA is T, uh, I would say if you don't have any problem with paying $275 for application fee, apply for it, okay? There is no harm, but you need ADAT. You don't need AFK, okay, for University of Toronto. You have to take ADAT. But don't expect a lot from UFD. But for Shulik, absolutely, okay? Not for Shulik. For other universities, they don't care about your GPA, okay? The only school which cares about the GPA is UF. And uh, if you want to know, my GPA was 3.9. Yeah, perfect. So before we go in for our last question, if anyone have a question, you can unmute yourself. You are right. Yeah, and are you, are you typing the chat box? Yeah, sure, absolutely. So, um, hello. Um, actually, my name is Thura Chenery. Um, my journey was so different. I graduated from Semmelweis University in Budapest, Hungary, and now I'm working uh, in the UK first year. And I do like to come to either US or Canada for a specialization pathway. That's why I wanted to ask um, the possibility of that and how would be the path like if I want to get a specialized in Canada, for, for instance. In that case, I have to um, pass AFK and um, is there any possibility to apply for universities there to get a specialized directly? Or you think that US path uh, one for me? Okay, so thank you for your uh, question. I think you were not in the session in the, in the beginning. Uh, so the very first thing that I discussed was exactly this, that unfortunately, uh, it, was, it was the first pathway that I was considering for myself to apply for uh, periodontics. However, after all those researches that I've done, uh, I got to know that it's not a rule that, you know, you need to be Canadian graduate or have a license to apply. But it's a hidden rule that there is almost zero chance for internationally trained dentists to get into a specialty prog programs directly. Okay. Mm -hmm. I know two, three, four people, internationally trained dentists, who could get into the program. Okay. But they had license already. Okay. And even with the license, the chance is very less. Okay. So among thousands of people that I know who applied, only two, three, four people could get it, okay? So technically, uh, if you go through the uh, statistics uh, mm -hmm. for past at least five years of specialty seats in Canada, you can see that over 85% of them is for UFD graduates. Yeah. Okay, so that's, yeah. that's not fair, I know, but this is what it is. So we and, can operate. And something that I would like to ask you about, how is the market of a specialist in, you, you, in Canada? For example, in uh, mm -hmm. it's like, is there any big change? Because for example, in England, if someone wants to come to England, I wouldn't say that don't go to um, pay um, a lot of, like don't go for investing to get a specialized to, um, to work as a specialist. Because like, if you're going to, for example, doing things like um, Invisalign or like getting some CPD courses and you do your advancement yourself, you're going to make that amount of money that a specialist is actually gaining. Mm -hmm. So, but I don't know how is the situation in Canada. Okay, thank you. That's actually a very good question uh, because guys, the mindset that we have about the specialty and being a specialist in Iran, in Middle East, in India, in, you know, in, uh, I don't know about Europe, uh, is completely different. That mindset is completely different in North America. Okay. That's one of, that was one of the reasons that I kind of decided to not go to that pathway because it doesn't worsen. it. Okay, yeah. so you're not getting that much more money. If you are a good general dentist, 
okay? Who perform everything? Who goes through the courses, the continuing educational courses? And you can do everything. You can earn a lot of money, much more than being a specialist, okay? So I have, I have a friend here in UFD who is in uh, oral and maxillofacial surgery. So I, I, I was asking him that, what do you think? Should I should I apply for maxillofacial surgery or perio after getting the degree from UFD next year? Uh, he told me, "Are you in love with oral and maxillofacial surgery or perio or not?" I said, "No, I'm in love with success and money." He said, "Okay, so then go and start your practice. Okay, it doesn't worth it." So, uh, so no. No, I don't know why everybody who are coming from Iran, actually I know because I was the same. Uh, everybody who are coming from Iran or Middle East, India, or everybody, they, they are looking for a specialty. No, there is no reason. If you want to have a good life, live a good life with a good status, with a good money, with a good life, you don't need to go to a specialty. If you are in love, really in love with a specialty program, Okay, then yes, because that's something that you want to do for rest of your life. Okay, this is for Canada, Dr. Soru. But let's say about a state, okay? A state is a little bit different. A state, if you apply, if you apply, go there in that targeted university and work as externship program for them for one or two year, then they will accept you definitely. Okay, so you can join the program, but after one or two years, at least being externship, uh, you know, intern in that university. So it means that just work for them for nothing. Okay, then they will, they will take you as resident in any specialty program other than ortho and maxillofacial surgery. Ortho and maxillofacial surgery, if you want to go, you have to be North American graduate. Okay. But for international trained dentists, other things like perio, prosto is super easy to get in. Prosto is super big because no one wants to go to prosto, okay? Uh, so prosto is super easy to get in. We don't have anything like restorative dentistry su such as tarmimi that we have in Iran. I don't know why we have tarmimi as specialty because it's not considered any other part of the world as a specialty. So I, I, I think it's not fair to people who were to this specialty in Iran. But anyways, this is what it is. So if you want to go to those, if you decide to go to a States for that specialty programs, and let's say you get it, okay, and go and start and get the specialty degree in a state, there is a problem. The problem is that you can just practice the specialty. Okay, and not in US, not in US. If you are Canadian resident and come to can come back to Canada with your specialty degree from a state, you can take the board exam and start to practice just in that specialty program. So if you are prostodontist and if you touch any tooth for RCT or for restorative for feelings, okay, college will suspend your license. Okay, so all in all, why? Why we should do that? Okay, unless if you are in love with the specialties. Okay, so that is my experience. Yeah, I would say maybe the first world countries are kind of like the same. It's, uh, it's the same story in England as well, but yeah, I understand the perspective behind it. Yeah, so that's all I could say about the specialties, but uh, believe me, you're going to have good life as general dentist in uh, either state or Canada, hopefully in Canada. I don't know. Now things are getting a little bit weird here because, uh, because of that new dental program that the government is now releasing. Uh, I hope they don't. Uh, but that is one of the reasons, actually, that I decided to go to university pathway because I would say that sometimes you cannot predict what will happen in Canada because of this liberal government. And if something happens, something bad happens, at least I have the opportunity to immediately move to a state and I start my practice there because I already also have the board. I passed part on that part too. 
So that was that is one of the advantages that at least I have as Canadian graduate. Thank you so much. Uh, I think Dr. Ali, you want to ask a question? Dr. Ali? Hello. Hi. Uh, uh, I'm a uh, uh, radiologist and uh, I'm in love with this, uh, uh, this uh, speciality. Uh, do you suggest me try for a speciality uh, directly or uh, there is no chance in Canada or? Uh, Dr. 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 Ali. I don't know uh, about, the, about the radiology. Actually, you're the first radiologist I'm seeing here. Oh, no, no, no. Actually, I have one other friend who is radiologist from Iran. And as far as I know, I'm not sure. You should double check it. But as far as I know, they don't recognize your specialty degree here. So that's why you cannot go to GAP program. What is GAP program? GAP program is for internationally dentist who are a specialist in their countries, okay? So they can apply for universities, join one and a half year program in that university in their specialty, okay? And then graduate with a specialty degree from that university. Uh, but it's so hard to get it because they only accept one person in each specialty each year, okay? In whole Canada, not each university, in whole Canada, one or two persons a year in each specialty that they recognize. But I, I know that from Iran, they recognize periodontics, uh, orthodontics, and prostodontics. These three, I know they recognize it. About uh, the pathology, no. Oh, and endo. Endo also they recognize, it, okay? So I don't know that uh, if they recognize radiology or not, based on what I heard from that friend, they don't recognize it, but I'm not sure. You double check it. So one of the one of the uh, pathway is that. Another pathway is to just apply for radiology from scratch. That mm -hmm. for that I recommend you to join the DDS program first, get your degree, and then apply for it. As internationally trained dentist, if you apply, there is not very high chance for you to get. It. Thank you. You're welcome. Unfortunately, it's, I know it's not fair, but this is what it is. Uh, is there any other question? I think I uh, got a question from Dr. Nas that what are the materials? Uh, can I go, I think the, the concept of the question is that, uh, can I go through before joining the course with Competentist? Same as me, I, I started with dental decks. Okay, I started with dental decks. When I joined the Confidentist, I was kind of studied dental decks twice, okay, before joining the Confidentist, and then I joined. So I think dental decks are good, good references for you to start. Okay, any other question? Yeah, I have another one. Uh, what is a new dental program you were referring to? Uh, sorry. You told I think that dental program is changing. Oh, dental Canada. program. That is the that is the federal dental program. It's kind of the insurance they give it to the people. Uh, it's same as uh, it's same as the medical, uh, you know, medical federal insurance program. And I don't have any problem with that insurances. My problem is that now in this program, if the, for example, if the tree surface filling composite filling, now it's something around $280, $280 uh, Canadian dollar. Under that program, it's gonna be something like $100. And you as associate dentist will get 40% of it. So it means that $40 for one MOD composite filling, which I'm not doing that. For $40, I'm not doing that, okay? That's, that's the problem that I have, okay? So they don't spend money from the pocket of government. They are spending money from your pocket as dentist, okay? That is the problem that all of the dentists have with this program. ODA, CDA, um, RCDSO, everybody is writing emails and uh, letters to the RCDSO and to, to the government, uh, sorry, uh, for this program, but 
I don't know if they if they approve it, I will move to a state definitely. Uh, can I also ask one last question? Mm -hmm. um, can you um, a little bit explain how is the dentistry life in Canada? Because like for me, um, like I'm already in England, but because I have some family member because ju just joining to family, I have to go through the process. So I just want to see how much uh, my life is improving from just uh, moving from England to like um, Canada. Can you explain a little bit about like how is the dentistry um, as an associate dentist initially in, for example, Toronto, let's say. Uh, Dr. Dr. Soru is asking, yeah? yeah? Yes. Okay, Dr. Soru, it's all about you, okay? It's all about you. Mm -hmm. I know I know general dentists in their first year of practice, they are uh, earning something like $7,000 a month, okay? Which is, I think, embarrassing because now Uber drivers are earning more. Uh, but I know also other general dentists who are earning more than $40,000 a month. Okay. Wow. Both so, of your numbers are higher than here though. Sorry? Uh, but that's wonderful because like both of your numbers are higher than England at this, at this point. Yeah, yeah. Europe, Europe, as far as I know, but my, my best friend is graduate from uh, Spain. Uh, he's, he's Iranian, but he graduated from Spain and now he has license in Canada. And he always tell me that, you know, as a dentist or as any medical uh, professional, you cannot have that much, you know, that much better life than other people in Europe. Okay. Europe is completely different. I know that, you know, especially about taxes. Yes, here you have to pay a lot of taxes, but there are so many legal gaps that you can use, okay, to reduce it. But in Europe, as far as I know, there is no legal gaps. So you have to pay your tax. Um, I think like, well, associate dentists are here usually are self-employed or um, either work as a limited company. Well, obviously if you're self-employed, you have 40% tax. If you're a limited company, it's going to be around 14% which is like very little but you're you, you're losing a lot of um like um i don't know country support i would say because england is also a tricky country so you have to pay the government a little a little bit so that in future you're if you need it the government can help you you know mm -hmm. yeah yeah i know that you know uh, i know those kind of things are kind of similar here to england but as a general dentist okay so let me tell you some, something Whenever you come to Canada for the first five years, okay, don't expect anything. For first five years, till mm -hmm. the time that you, you are going through the process to get settled, to get used to Canadian dentistry and everything, okay, I would say between three to five years, but five years is what you should expect, okay? You will have definitely downgrade, okay? Downgrade, a lot of downgrade, okay? I had, I, I was like this in Iran. And when I got into Canada, I was like this, even lower. Okay. Mm -hmm. So now after four years, after four years, I can see that, okay, my, my, my life is getting improved. Okay. And my, I have a cousin here who went to the same process. Uh, he graduated from Iran 2007. Uh, and um, he came here, he went to UFD, same as me. He graduated in 2012. And now it's almost 10 years that he's a dentist here in Canada and he has amazing life, okay? So he has almost 10, 10 dental offices. So just, I want to tell you for the first five years, don't expect a lot, but after that, your life would be a good life, okay? But first five years, you will definitely have downgrade. So that is one of the hardest part of immigration, actually. Okay, so you need to know that. Yeah, I understand, like I've been through immigration two, two times in my life. So, exactly. yeah. so that's the same. <laughs> yeah, thank you so much for your explanation. You're very welcome. Uh, we have another question that uh, I think you mentioned that you came here in Canada as a permanent residency and I assume that you got it through the express entry, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we have a question that if um, 
if he came came here for a study dentistry as an international student? Uh, unfortunately, Canada for... doesn't accept international students for dental pro. Uh, how about the four years they they study science? Yes, they don't. They don't accept international even for that course. Yes, they don't at all because the. A uh, number of the Canadian dental schools are very limited and the seats are very limited and there are very high demand, uh, you know, for, for these seats inside the country from Canadian, you know, Canadian people. That's why they don't accept any international students for dental program, unfortunately. Uh, you mentioned there's a hidden rules over here. Is there any rules that the Canadian citizen are have a priority than the permanent residency? No, no. Permanent residents are same as citizens, no. Okay, perfect. So uh, I think we go for our last question that how confident this could help you to achieve your goals in Canada? I think I already talked about it a little bit, but uh, sure. I would say that, yeah, I would say that uh, Dr. Mehdi and his knowledge, uh, actually Dr. Mehdi, is, I, I'm a very picky person. People who knows me, they know that I'm a very picky person. And I kind of, it, 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 that dentist, a dentist that I trust, that would be so knowledgeable, so skillful, okay? But I would say that one of the first dentists that I really trusted in Canada was Dr. Mehdi, because Okay, I, I was dentist. So when I joined the course, I was seeing that how knowledgeable is he and how much I can learn from him. Okay, and that's why that I, after I decided to become instructor uh, to help internationally trained dentists, uh, although I had a chance to go to other institutions uh, because I was also part of them, because I, I was part of the Schulich Dentistry, I was part of the UFD, I was part of the, all these uh, dental schools, and I knew everything about them. So everybody asked me to go and start there. Uh, but I decided to come with Confidentist. And the reason is that I learned all of these here. Okay, so I wanted to get back to the Confidentist. So I would say that this institution, I'm not, I'm not talking about other institutions, okay? Because all of them are doing their job, uh, which is a good standard of job. But if someone asked me, I would recommend this course, this institution, because this institution will help you not only to go through this process and be the, the one of the most strongest candidate in this process, but also will give you enough knowledge about Canadian dentistry and about the Canadian guidelines, about the Canadian approaches in dentistry, which can really help you in your future practice. So that's why I, I do recommend this institution, not because I'm the, I'm, uh, you know, I'm the instructor here, because I was part of this uh, institution as a student, as the candidate, okay, before becoming instructor. So that's all I think about this. Uh, I can remember when I wanted to uh, apply for UFD, although Dr. Mehdi was super busy, when I asked him to, uh, you know, to uh, guide me if he knows anything about the process. He took time for me, uh, you know, he talked to me and it was a, such a good support for me and I really appreciate it. That's why now I'm doing it for other people and hopefully if I can help them to get into a good, good uh, level of dentistry and dental knowledge here in Canada. So that's all about uh, confident is that I can tell. I think everything is clear about confident. Thank you so much. So uh, I'm out of my question, but if uh, you guys have any question, you can ask Dr. and I will send you our website address on the chat box for you guys to solve the access. Um, I think if not, we can go for a quick goodbye. Thank you for joining us today. I really appreciate for your time and attention, Doctor, and all of you guys that meet be with us today on the Sunday morning. Thank you so much.
Thank you, Maryam Khanum. Uh, I hope you have a good rest of the weekend. And please don't hesitate to reach me through my Instagram or the email or the Confidentist webpage. Uh, I would be with you if you have any question, okay? And hope to see you all in person. Have a good weekend. Perfect. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye.